So when you're creating your own library, you're deciding what controls you create and what they actually control. That doesn't always make sense to the person who's actually gonna be using this library. You might need to explain a little bit more about what that control does and why it's there. So why not make some little help messages to help out your users with your library? Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. If you make your own contact instrument, you probably love tips that make them feel a little bit more professional, a little bit more special. This is one of those tips that actually does help your GUI feel a little bit more professional, a little more swish, and prevents heavy text documents or text-based interfaces and overcrowded GUIs. It's something that's really quick and really easy to add, and it's something that only requires one line of code to every control that you have. So let's dive in today and take a look at what that is. So to show you how this all works, I've created a very simple GUI with a single knob, but on that knob, we're gonna add a help message. Now, when I look at this text editor here, basically I'm looking at a very brief script. It's making a performance view, it's setting the height and width, and it's declaring a simple knob and clearing out the message bar at the end. That's all happening in the on init block. And then the on UI block is actually tying functionality to that. So it's saying it's going to set the engine par volume. Uh, so it's going to do that for the first group. So it's going to be changing the volume of that group. And it's going to be updating the knob label so that it shows the parameter that it's setting it to. So, you know, if I'm setting it to eight, decibels, it's going to show eight decibels. Now it's a very simple script, but it allows me to show you this whole help message system very easily. So I'm just going to copy this as is into contact so that we get an instrument being sort of created or the GUI being created. So I'm going to highlight all of this and copy it. I'm going to bring in contact, double click to create a new instrument and jump across to the script editor, place this in the last script slot and just paste in and apply. And there you go. You can see that we've got a very simple single knob that is tied to the first group. You can see that knob label there being updated with the value top to bottom. And if I click out of the spanner, you can see this is it's just a very simple interface. What we want to do though, is we want to create a message to help this along. Maybe for some reason, your user just doesn't understand what the volume knob does, or maybe what it's controlling, because you know there could be several volume controls. Think about more complex stuff as well. If you've got you know depth or rate knobs, but you're not sure if that's for a phaser or for a delay, these little help messages can help you isolate that and show your user what it's actually doing, but without putting huge texts and labels into the background, that just over confuse visually what it looks like. You basically want it so that as you hover over the control, it shows you a little message. Now, if I decrease this window a little bit here, you've got two little sections that are below here. And often what you've seen before is probably the message bar, this very bottom one. And you might instinctively be thinking, this is where I'm gonna add my message. And you could do that. If I click back over here for a moment, I could every time that we click the UI control, set a message, to say what the control does. I can just pop it into some quotations and say, this is a volume control for group one, for example. Now I could copy my text, bring it back into the editor and simply replace the whole lot. And now when I click and drag this knob, a new message is coming up down here. This is a volume control for group one. Now you can do that, but the message bar isn't really used for that at all. I've actually written a bit of an article in the new contact knowledge base that I've created, and I'll leave a link down below. But basically the message bar is used for diagnostics or testing or bug fixing, or just basically used for you as the coder. It's not really a user-based thing, not really for the performance. It's not really for anything other than for you to test your library and, and make some adjustments. So. Forget that, take that message out because we don't really want that. We're gonna do something a little bit different. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna just completely remove that message prompt. I don't need it. What I'm gonna do instead is I am going to type something into our on init block. And I'm gonna use a command called set control help. I'm gonna go set underscore control underscore help. You can see sublime text there helping to fill this in. So I'm just gonna hit enter here and it shows me what parameters it should be expecting a variable and some form of text. This is a very simple way to create a hover message in contact that appears in the bar above the message bar. If you take a look at contact above this message bar, you have this big space here. And it's actually like a hover over prompts. You can add this sort of thing 
quite easily with the set control help command. In fact, there are a few basic ones that Contact has built in. If you hover over any of these two, you can see it coming up. So you've got pitch bend and a little bit of details about what that does and the modulation wheel and a bit about what that does. So we want to add something so that as we hover over our volume control, something will appear in this message bar at the bottom. So essentially it's very easy. We go set control help. We say what we want to actually target. So it's this particular control that we want to target. So I'm going to pop that in there. And then we put the text in and I'll put some quotations in here and I'll just pop in a simple message here. Done. What this command is doing is right there on the on in it, it's saying that this particular control, whenever we hover over it, will always display this message. So if I copy all of that across, come back over to contact and paste in the new script, as I now hover over this one, look at that, you can see this is a volume control for the group one. So it's very simple, very easy. You can tie this to every single control. I often just include this by default on any control I create. So that then I've got a section that I can, I can add a little bit of a help message to. So I would actually come in here and leave this sort of together all under the declaring a knob section. And then, you know, I might make my next knob and simply copy this text, come down a bit, paste it in, and maybe this is going to be a slider. And I would go through and change, you know, based on whatever I wanted it to be. Maybe it's a cutoff slider or something like that. You could go through, update all of your different variables very simply. Set it to maybe 400 across, something like that. It's going to be a slider, so it doesn't need this end bit either. If I'm racing through this a bit quickly and you're not too sure what's going on here, jump back to my channel page. There's a full contact free tutorial series that gets you right up and going with all the basic controls, which includes a slider, a knob, and all sorts of other things in the scripting chapter. And I could just update this one to, this is the cutoff for uh, maybe a low pass filter, something like that. Of course, I've got to change that to slider as well, UI underscore slider. All right, I think uh, that probably is everything. Well, I actually don't need this at all, or this, frankly, because a slider doesn't have any of that. So I'll just get rid of that and away we go. There we go. And as I hover over, look at that. This is a cutoff for low pass filter. So this can work for any kind of control. It's super easy. Add it in as part of your default for every control and it will be so much easier. You can even use an array and I'm excited to show you how that works in a future video. So why not subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this quick tip and I will catch you in the next one.